Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, everybody. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. For the latest railroad build project in my workshop, the customer has requested a full signalling system, and of course that requires a lot of additional technology that I haven't used before. So rather than risking doing it wrong on the railroad and having to redo a lot of work, I've decided to take the precaution of building a simple test track. I didn't record the earliest phases of the test track because I was doing it concurrently with other projects. And of course the basic bench work and track laying is the same as everything else that I've shown on this channel many times before. So anyway, let's just head out to the workshop and take a look at this test track. Here is the start of my signal test track. The reason I'm putting this in is that I want to make sure that I've got all the electronics for the signaling system correct before I build the railroad. That way I'm not going to have to make modifications on the layout. I can make all the modifications on here and get it right and then just copy what I've got when I build the railroad. It is five sections. It's a total of 39 feet long, the longest I could get before I ran into the electrical panel. And there are nine sections, nine electrical blocks. They are marked, the boundaries are marked with black lines. And the critical parts are these two junctions. I have a pair of crossovers with a single junction at one end, and that is the same as the first junction that will be signaled on the railroad. And then at the other end, I have a pair of crossovers with junctions on both sides. And although they are all distorted, that is the layout of the other three junctions that need signaling. So other than the signals, this test track is finished. This is the junction I'm going to signal first, and then I can build the lower deck of the railroad. The other three junctions are all on the upper deck. Well, my test track has been built, and I've got the track on it. The track is divided into 20 blocks, and these black lines that I've drawn with the Sharpie show where the block boundaries are. If we look under here, this is the BDL 168 detection board. It is capable of detecting occupancy in 16 track sections. I mentioned earlier that I have 20. That is because the last sections at each end of each main line are not recorded. Those are just control blocks allowing me to park locomotives out of the way with none of the sensors lit. <coughs> These are the test chips. Each board comes with one of those. Since I'm going to need several detection boards eventually, I bought four of them so that I would have four test chips. Each of them has a single red LED lit indicating that it's working and each one also has four unlit LEDs on the front. Those tell me which track blocks are occupied. So let me just run the locomotive down here and watch the sensors change. Okay, it's in the first block now. That's the first LED is lit. As it goes from one block to another, one LED, a second LED will be lit before this next one goes, just before the next one goes out. You see, so for about half a second, the locomotive is in both blocks. I'm going to turn it off before it hits the end. 
soon as that last light goes out, it means it's approaching the end. So that confirms that this is working. I've also hooked up the octocoder to the DCC. I've tested all the turnouts work with that. The next step is to get the laptop set up in here with JMRI on it so that I can control it from the computer. I have spent this morning installing and setting it up. Once I've got it talking to the railroad, then the next step will be to start working on the signals. Here is the test track with the block detection all hooked up and the laptop installed on a small desk underneath it and JMRI loaded. I have a mimic diagram of the first junction. This is in edit mode at the moment. Let's take it out of that and uh, put it in the operational mode. You can see a red line on the middle track on the left. And if we look up here, that is where the locomotive is now sitting. I can switch the turnouts by clicking on here. Let me turn the throttle back on again and drive the train. As it moves, the red block will, will extend. Note how it briefly occupies both blocks. Flip the crossover back, reverse the locomotive. I'll go a bit faster so it doesn't take so long. And there it is, moved to the rear track. And the other crossover also works. I think I missed the button the first time. And then that one changes as well. And there is a problem with the octopus board. That's this one that controls the turnouts. I just discovered yesterday there's no way of sending feedback from the octopus to JMRI. So I'm gonna to have to switch to the quad boards, which are actually designed with JMRI in mind. I am back out in the workshop again with my trusty friend Zeus. I've been working inside for the last few days as I had to wait for an order to arrive. I may or may not already have mentioned it, but I got part way through getting everything set up with JMRI and I discovered that the octopus boards that I've been using are not compatible. The problem is that this board has no way of sending feedback to the computer to tell the JMRI system that someone has used a toggle control to throw a turnout. Ultimately, the excess octopus boards will be put up for sale on my website because they are still a great product. They just are not compatible with the electronics necessary for this particular project. Anyway, let's head over to the other side of the workshop. My package arrived yesterday. Yes, it was split down one corner, but there was no damage to the contents because they were very well packed. And here is a sample of the new board already attached to a piece of plywood for hanging on the wall. 
This larger rectangle here is the basic quad LN board from N3IX. This is their signal driver. And this is something I thought I would try, this tiny addition here. That's a Y board. It does the equivalent of four Y cables. And I thought I would try it because it looked like it was really neat. Two of the servos that are getting attached to this set of four will be crossovers. So I have the option of plugging both ends of the crossover into that same board. I think it'll be neater than a Y cable. Anyway, this is now ready for mounting on the wall under the railroad. Let me get everything hooked up and I will be right back. Don't go away. Well, here is the first quad LM board with the signal extension board hooked up to the railroad, plugged in with the power supply and the local net connections. I've already programmed it with a decoder address. The next thing I'm going to do is transfer the cables from the servos and the fascia controls from the octopus board to this one. And then once I've done that, I can get everything programmed. So don't go away, I will be right back. Here is the dispatcher panel after everything is hooked up by the new board. And if I start pressing the fascia controls, we can see that everything changes on the panel. Let's just zoom in a bit. It's kind of small, so they're not very obvious. Let's do the, the far right crossover. And then back again. The central crossover. And now let's put the single turnout back. There. So everything is working. I can control them either from the fascia or through GAMRI. Bring the mouse in, click on the crossover, and it works. You should be able to hear the switch machines moving. Well, already early in the process, before I even get to installing signals, it's no doubt already obvious that the test track has already saved me a lot of rework being able to discover that I had to use a different board before installing a whole load of them on the railroad. But with that much out of the way, next week I will work on installing some signals on it. And I hope to see you back here for that. So until then, thanks for watching and bye for now.